Welcome to Sailing Trilling. In this episode, I take you from Rosseville in Galway, Ireland, to Isla in the Hebrides, Scotland. I thought I'd also start by sharing with you some of the maintenance stuff that's been going on to keep Trilline operational during the cruise. In Isla, I take you to a remarkable village store and share a little bit about how I keep my feet, which are neurologically damaged, healthy. I do hope you enjoy the video. I'm at the bus stop in Rosseville, waiting for a bus to Galway and then to Dublin and then to Newry. Uh, my logistician back in England, uh, who runs a company called Board Games Extra, which is fabulous if you're looking for board games tokens or expansion packs, uh, has managed to ship a part that I desperately need to Newry, um, but it would be much more complicated to ship it actually to here. So I'm about to uh, engage in a three bus journey to uh, Newry in order to um, pick that up. Sailing around the west of Ireland isn't a small cruise. What with my disability and relative lack of sailing hours recently, I wasn't sure that I could pull it off. Because of that, I didn't order every large scale chart I might need for the coast north of Rosseville. And so I was very grateful to Todd Chart in Belfast for shipping me some extras and the latest pilot book for the south of the west coast of Scotland. In Rosseville, I had to replace my vintage autopilot which had done a brilliant job up till then, but started throwing errors and then gave off the smoke and burning smell that indicates a truly dead circuit board. I am incredibly grateful to Nicky Potterton Electrical, the Raymarine representative in Ireland who sponsored a new ST1000 from Raymarine for Trilene, and also to Galway Maritime, Galway's only chandlers who carried it out to me. Inevitably, upgrading kit that was probably 30 years old meant that a new plug was needed in the cockpit. Now, today I have to sort out a problem of my own making. Behind me, this plywood plate should not be here. There should be a nice Raymarine plotter. But it developed a fault uh, on the way up from Kinsale. Actually, from the way from Bantry, it developed a fault. And I had to take it out and it was quite windy and there was quite a lot of water around and so damage control techniques were necessary to get the hole plugged up and when you plug a hole in a hurry using damage control techniques you don't want the patch to come off possibly you don't want the patch to come off ever and so getting this patch off in order to install the new plotter um, is going to be a nasty job for this trick to have worked quite as well as it had done you need a couple of things to be true. Firstly, it's ideal if the surfaces aren't, haven't been properly prepared for the bonding in the first place, which in this case they certainly weren't. They were wet and salty and so it's very likely that we didn't get anything approaching a good bond. And secondly, if possible, you need to be able to remove the adhesive in a peel type of way rather than a pull type of way. And there is a third thing, your chisels, uh, tools, scrapers, whatever, need to be insanely sharp shaving sharp in order to make it work nicely. In case you're wondering how we can go from utter chaos to launch 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 in what looks like 30 seconds there are a couple of things firstly I've been watching the weather like a hawk for the best part of a week and it's been really consistent and the second thing is that all the passage planning has already been done and I've had deliberately a really good sleep so I didn't cook last night and that will serve me well uh, on this long leg north. This is going to be a bit of a noisy one if it works at all. We're just close reaching out of Rosseville towards the end of the land so to speak called Scurred Rocks and I've got this sort of complex rock garden close under my lee, well, a mile and a bit, maybe a bit more. Um, and so I'm having to stay quite alert because until I'm round that, I can't free the boat away onto a broader reach and really start motoring north. 
this is not a terribly photogenic passage. It is, however, an effective one. We sailed from Rosseville and it's now a day and a bit later and we are 40 miles from the turn point at the top of Ireland. So we're just finishing the crossing of Donegal Bay, which is a astonishingly wide inlet into uh, the coast. The, the open mouth from lighthouse to lighthouse is sort of a hundred miles and then haven't entirely decided what happens next but very probably um, if the conditions along the top of Ireland are suitable we will uh, run east to uh, Isla in Scotland and to Port Ellen. Um, it's another day but the wind's suitable and it's a soldier's wind we're really heaving along at between four and six miles an hour which is not bad going for this little boat and a daytime entrance into Port Ellen is probably to be preferred over a nighttime entrance to Windward into Loch Swilly or Loch Foyle uh, which are two places which I would love to visit but um, I don't think I'm going to get to on this trip because the objective on this late season cruise is to get round Ireland. I can say that this coast is going to meet me again. I, um, I need to come back here and cruise properly because it's astonishingly beautiful. Good morning, I've made it to Isla and I'm in the marina at Port Ellen. Port Ellen uh, is a really nice harbour and the local community have club together to build a community marina facility, a sort of guest harbour uh, of the sort of Norwegian or European style and I was very grateful last night because the anchorage was uh, on the other side of the bay was looking not really very nice. One of the things that's really striking in many of these small island communities is the number of names on the war memorial. Uh, these islands took a horrible toll during that war uh, and in some cases they were rendered essentially unviable by the loss of so many young men during World War I. Port Ellen's very ordinary convenience shop houses a miracle. In the back, Campbell's of Isla runs a zero waste shop and an excellent delicatessen. The zero waste store dispenses everything from muesli through nuts to nigella and fenugreek. Packets of genuine vanilla poke out from behind spices. For a cruising yacht, being able to restore in the quantities needed is a great gift. Anyone with neurological problems in their feet tends, or hopefully is, obsessed about the condition of the skin because a problem down here can lay you up in bed for weeks, possibly months, and if you get a bad one, bad pressure sore, it never really heals properly and your skin is weaker there for life and that is not something that you really want. So my my system here on the boat is clean cotton socks, they're pure cotton socks um, and then I tend to wear, if it's going to be a day like today, on top these um, uh, seal skins which are socks that have got a Gore-Tex lining and what that does for me is it makes sure that as far as possible my feet stay dry. Now if you're a conventional yachty what you do is you wear really big boots but I can't get really big boots on over the top of my orthotics and also my orthotics put holes in my boots. So this is a internal boot, if you like, that tries to keep my feet warm, dry and happy 